guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. So it's been a while since we covered a rare champion. Well, we did Bellower uh, a few weeks ago, but other than that, you know, I've done a couple legendaries, so I want to kind of even things out here, even the scales between uh, kind of free-to-play players and those who are lucky enough to have uh, all those, those legendaries, and they just keep coming out with more strong legendaries in the game. It's crazy, but either way, today we have Elaine. So, Elaine is, is really, really solid. She is one of the just really solid, it, you know, early game to mid game and even into kind of the beginning of end game. Like, you can clear level 20 dungeons with Elaine. I have her built specifically for campaign, dungeons, and arena. I've seen people use Elaine as kind of a damage dealer on clan boss, like early game. I'm not talking, you know, mid game to late game, but you can get by with her as well. There's just a couple things I would do a little bit differently in terms of her gear. And I do have a stun set on her, which we'll talk about. It's not incredibly ideal, but I'll talk about why I like that on her uh, when we get to the gear on her. So, but let's start out with her kit as we always do here inside these champion guides on the channel, starting with her A1, which is Keen Shot. Now, Elaine's great because she's a rare champion who's easy to get, non-void rare champion, uh, and she has a ton of AoE capabilities, right? Uh, excluding her A1, which attacks one enemy and places an extra hit if this attack is critical, which it almost always will be, so she'll be placing at least multiple hits on her A1. On her A2 here, attacks one enemy, then all enemies, uh, has an extra 15% chance of inflicting a critical hit, and then places a 30% increased crit rate buff on her for three turns if the target is killed. So pretty solid ability here on the A2. It is an AoE with an extra hit, so you can kind of pick your opponent who you want to do the double hit too, then plus that crit rate as well. Now it's relatively easy comparative to, uh, to epic champions and legendary champions to actually invest books in your rares. So she's worth booking, especially here on the A, uh, or excuse me, on the A2 uh, for that cooldown. But that's really the only thing that, inc that, that really kind of, you know, it puts puts the weight on the scales in terms of in terms of books on a lane. Otherwise, it's all damage. You can see on the A1, you're you know you're using five books just to get, or you're going up to level five with four books to get that extra damage. And you know she is a damage dealer. That's her role in a team. She's a nuker essentially. Okay, so having that extra damage definitely helpful. 25% on the A1, 25% on the A2 as well, or 20% on the A2. Excuse me. And then the Valley of Death again is just more damage so if you're booking here it's all for that one cooldown on the a2 is it worth it i'll let you guys be the judge depends on how many rare books you guys have saved up but she's definitely a champion that you can get by with without booking at all okay on the a3 it's a three turn called valley of death attacks all enemies two times this is actually an insane ability especially for a rare champion so it's a double aoe attack and it's on a three turn cooldown, which makes it really good for campaign farming. You rarely see a double attack on a three turn cooldown on a rare champion. I think it's probably the only one in the game, okay? So this is what makes Elaine useful. And this is why this A3 is really why I put the stun set on her, right? She, I use her as a damage and also as a crowd control, which is really underrated in this game, especially for new players. I don't think people, uh, you know, fully appreciate how strong stun and even sleep in some situations not on auto attacks not on campaigns but in the arena can be on a champion okay so we'll talk about that in a moment but yeah her a3 is super solid and then her aura is increased ally hp in all battles by 15 percent it's not a bad aura to use uh, you know early game again or mid game if you don't have any good other aura champion so you can use this anywhere in the game you can use it you know in all battles okay so uh elaine that's elaine set and she's really cool you know she is uh, like I said, it's been a while since we've done a non-void rare champion here on the channel, and I'm really happy with, uh, I decided for Elaine next to build her up, to max her out, because I think her kit is, is really useful, actually. She's definitely one of the more useful rares in the game in terms of all-around capabilities, especially, again, into the mid-game and even into the late game. Uh, so, talking about offense here, uh, I went to Flawless Execution down the offense tree. Now, if you're going to use her for, like, clan boss, like, if you're an early game player and you want to max out her masteries, you can go War Master on her as well. But you know what? I'm really a fan of going with a Flawless Execution. Just, she is a nuker, after all. So, the extra crit damage is incredibly helpful on Elaine, okay? There's another option, too, of going Helm Smasher, ignoring 50% uh, or 50% chance of ignoring 25% of the defense, but again, 
I'm really happy with just going flawless execution and happy recommending that to you guys as well. So the offensive tree is obvious, right? But then we have the decision defense or support. Well, that's pretty obvious too. You don't need accuracy on her, but we do have her in a stun set. So that kind of shifts the tables a little bit here in terms of, okay, it's worth considering to go support, but it's still not worth it in my opinion. You still want to go defense tree on your lane, even if you are lucky enough to have a stun or a day set on her. So, uh, you know, if you, we'll talk about other sets to use on her if you don't have those, okay? So I'll go on to uh, get the resist up. I like starting out with resist on her. Uh, also, especially if you're going to be focusing on arena, usually resist is incredibly helpful in arena versus, uh, you know, just you know, campaign and dungeons, although it is important to in certain specific situations against certain bosses, of course. Uh, so we went down to uh, delay death and we went down, we ended, excuse me, on retribution, having that atta uh, chance to counterattack when she loses 25% of her max HP is definitely a solid. Retribution is like the money ability for a lot of, uh, a lot of champions in this game on the defensive tree, so that's what we decided to go in uh, for her as well. If we we're gonna go support, we would just go with the accuracy, uh, and again, that's only if you're using a stun or a sleep set. So, you know, that doesn't apply. I would say 99% of you guys that would not even, you wouldn't even consider the support tree, okay? Uh, so again, artifacts. To put her in a stun set, to put her in a sleep, a day set, right? You have to build her accuracy up. And that's a big sacrifice to make, but I just love that crowd control, especially because she has three, you know, every four turns she has three uh, opportunities to land those stuns on every enemy. She's great at crowd control on the waves because of the double AoE hit on her A3 and the single AoE hit on her A2. So it's just a, a lot of AoE potential. I love her to use her in that capa capacity, okay? So if you don't have a stun set on her, what are you going for? Of course, you're going for attack percentage. All of her skills are attack based. So getting that attack high along with her crit rate at at least 85% because she does have that improved crit rate in the 30% improved crit rate on her A2, and that lasts for three turns on a four turn cooldown. So when booked, of course. So I still like to shoot for 85% on a lane, even 100%, you're looking great on a lane. There's no harm uh, of having crit, uh, crit rate gauntlets on her. I would recommend crit rate gauntlets uh, to most of all of you guys using a lane. Now I went with attack on the chest. But if she is dying, if she's not able to solo clear a brutal level, for example, or you're not able to rely on her on whatever level you're struggling with, with dungeons, uh, with Dragon's Lair, whatever, uh, you might want to consider going with defense on the chest or HP on your chest, okay? And the reason being is, the reason I have the luxury of doing this is because the gear is pretty solid. It's not like end game end game gear that i have on her right now but check out check this out what is it is it the uh yeah check out this hat this this helmet right here guys hat check out this hat she's got guys check out this helmet right i got a three roll on defense 26 percent defense on my helmet so that kind of gave me the opportunity to go all out and go with the attack on the chest. And you guys have to play this, this game of calculations when you're gearing up any of your champions, right? Hey, I got a triple roll on defense. Well, that gives me a little flexibility to go attack on the chest. Just be, be aware, right? If your champions are constantly dying, if your nukers are constantly dying, you need to take that attack percentage chest off and put in a defense or put in an HP chest as well, okay? So on the boots, I recommend speed on her, so I would go speed boots. So again, we talked about it, speed, crit rate on the gauntlets, and on the chest, I'm recommending uh, attack if you can build that defense or HP in other areas, otherwise go with defense and HP. And in terms of her stat priorities, again, it's attack percentage, it's speed, and it's crit rate and crit damage. Those are the, the stats that you're looking for uh, on your Elaine, and all the while valuing the sub roles of defense percentage. Percentage, HP percentage as well, okay? And if you're using an arena, don't be afraid of resist as well. Matter of fact, I have a resist banner on my uh, Elaine right now. Because I have a stun set, if I had a good accuracy banner available, I would use accuracy instead, but there's nothing wrong with resistance on the banner as well. I personally like resistance banners as like my second option uh, to accuracy, just in general when I'm farming banners. I think that their resistance is a stat that I believe is a bit underrated in the game, especially in arena. Maybe it's appropriately uh, rated in the arena, okay? Crit damage, definitely want to go crit damage on the amulet and on the ring. You can go defense. Uh, defense would probably be the priority. I went attack because this is a pretty solid ring, and I got the uh, 
the attack roll on it as well with some defense in the sub stats so i decided to go with it but again attack defense is uh what you're really looking for out of that ring uh with those percentage sub rolls on there as well uh if you can get them right sub stats so that's how you want to gear your Elaine. You can see her reviews here are pretty glowing. People who have Elaine review her really well. And again, guys, consider going with, uh, if you have it, if you have the gear, of course, consider, you know, farming up a stun set. Or even if you want to use her in the arena, consider rocking a daze set on her, of course. Well, I, I, you know what? Daze would not work, actually, now that I say it, because you're hitting two times. I guess it would work. Well, you'd be waking up the first wave that you attacked on the first AoE. You'd be waking up anybody that you put to sleep on the first AoE with a second AoE. So I'm going to go ahead and nix that. It's just stun or nothing on her. So in terms of other sets that you would want to use, of course, attack sets. Uh, let's just go ahead and we'll go down the list really quickly here. You can go with lifesteal if you want to. You can go with uh, offense sets, crit rate if you need it. Uh, again, you don't really need accuracy. Speed is definitely an option. I wouldn't go all speed, but you can go one or two speed sets on her if that's what you have and then after that i mean it's just the special stuff we're not going to talk about the uh the more difficult to get sets of course a lot of these work on her but a crit damage works as well so just offensive stuff for the most part again i like her for that crowd control but you might be different certainly a champion like bellower works better in a stun set than Elaine does because he's also debuffing. So you naturally have to build his accuracy high anyway, right? So the total stats that I have on my Elaine are, as you guys can see, about 30k HP, 3,500 on the attack. Defense is uh, pretty all right, I guess. Speed is, is healthy at 182. Crit rate, like I said, aim for around 85. 84 works. Aim for 100 if you can. And then I have the accuracy on her as well. A lot of that's from the Great Hall, though, because I focus on magic affinity on my champions, so that's a luxury that I have with her. So 174 accuracy is going to allow her to land a lot of those stun debuffs. So I think that's basically a, uh, a good coverage of Elaine. Again, in terms of where she'll be used, campaign is great. Uh, arena is is fantastic in in you know mid and even into like gold league arena dragon's lair she's fantastic arena defense again and not great reviews but she's you know you could do worse in terms of nukers uh especially if you can land a defense down on the same team of the lane that's actually important we should talk about this more on these champion guides right talk about what other champions should be with this champion for their for them excuse me to excel right and with Elaine, you really want a defense down champion on the same team as her. So her and Bellower, for example, work great together. Both of them in a stun set together is incredible for crowd control, okay? Uh, and then, you know, you can see it here. Every dungeon except for Fire's Knight, she's basically really good in Clan Boss 4.3. Again, it's like early Clan Boss, okay? So you can say that a lot of those reviews are probably people who just picked up the game. And that's totally fine as well. So let's go ahead and uh, try her out in the arena first, guys. She's a great, like, early game nuker. I'm just going to put her right in for my biggin and see how she does here against this team, right? And you can see that I have the defense down in my Madame Cerise. We're going to go ahead and get that attack up on her too. So she'll be hitting uh, pretty hard here, I think. I'm going to go ahead and land the... Uh, well, I don't want Cerise to... Okay, to AoE debuff me. So we're going to put everybody to sleep here with the Kaimar. Then we're going to land the defense down on everybody. And now she's going to have a chance to attack all enemies two times. So we'll see how she does here. Think she'll kill anybody? We will see. Boom, boom. She kills three. And then <laughs> and then they all get revived. It looks like I should have. I'm an idiot. I should have put the provoke on... Uh, on the Rezzer. Always put the Provoke on the Rezzer. But it's okay. I think I'm still feeling good about this one. But it should have been over already, right? And the good thing about... Uh, this is like almost a, a great team, really. She's a great nuker. You guys can see. She's going to do it again here. Boom! Didn't work the first time. Well, it's going to work the second time. So you can see she killed everybody twice. She's really trying to... She's really trying to get... She's really trying to take advantage of her, her time in the spotlight here in this champion guide, right? Uh, let's go ahead and just try... Let's try the next one and see how we do. Let's kind of go down the line here. A couple battles. Uh, again, I have higher power, but keep in mind that uh, my team power here is predicated largely on my... Uh, my resist. I have 10 out of 10 resist in my magic affinity, which is 3 out of my... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, 3 out of my 4 champions here. So that really improves my team uh, power. So again, it's going to be the same thing, and she's going to kill everybody again, right? <laughs> Every except for a Skullcrown, of course. 
And you can see that she's a solid champion, right? She's a solid nuker. I mean, I can run her here. I can run her much higher. These teams aren't necessarily the best here. Let's run her against like another seeker team here. Yeah, a little bit higher power on this team and higher defense as well. Let's see how she handles this comp. So again, we're going to start out. We're going to go ahead and put the Pavroke on uh, their Seeker. Scared of that Draco there. Scared of the, uh, the uh, Skull Crusher as well. So let's go ahead and strip everything off. Let's see how she does here against a heavier defensive team. And again, she kills two right off the bat there. Can we finish the job? I feel like we can. And again, she's my only big damage dealer on this entire team. As a rare kind of a starter champion, she holds her own. She does really well. I'm going to go on auto for here. And uh, I think you guys get the idea, right? Again, what you should be taking away from this, if you're new to the champion or if you're new to the game or, you know, if you just didn't realize her arena potential, is you put her with a defense down champion. It doesn't matter who it is. As long as you build them to go before her. The speed order, she should be probably be going last on your arena team, right? So speed, speed, and then defense down. Attack up if you have it. So on this team... I have Seeker, who's putting the attack buff on her. And then I have Cerise, who's putting the defense down on my opponents. And then it's just, it's magic after that. You guys saw, you know, a few times now how good she is. So let's go ahead and show her just solo in the campaign here, guys. Let's go end game, but brutal, because I wanted her to be able to actually solo it. Let's just go stage seven. Let's put her against the boss and see how she does all by herself here. And we're just going to put her on auto. And you guys will see, like, she's a great campaign farmer, especially for early game. And she doesn't land any stuns there, unfortunately. But, you know, she'll make quick work. So, first wave down. Second wave, well, one out of four down, right? And you guys can see that, you know, that's the second, that's her A2 there where she puts the, and you, we landed one stun there. Stuns are so great because you can still do damage to everybody and... You know, it, it, it wastes their entire turn. It's just, it's it's fantastic. You know, it's definitely, stun is my favorite ability in the game. And, you know, it's not even close. So you can see this is easy for her here. This is easy. I mean, not even close. You can see, obviously, that's not what you're, you're not going to be running just Elaine solo runs. You can see 37 seconds. And she makes relatively quick work of these dungeons. Let's go ahead and put her against, like, another another one just to see what she does against the normal waves here and again you put her with a defense down and in a speed an apothecary or something to keep her alive and you guys are going to be just fine here and you can see landing that stun is going to skip the turn and it doesn't really come into play there but you know i'm not going to show you her in every dungeon I'll, I'll run her into dragons but the reason you're using her in dragons or ice golem isn't to actually do a lot of damage to the boss, to the dragon or the ice golem, is to actually help with the waves, to really nuke down those waves, help with your speed time, keep everybody alive, especially in this case with my stun set on her, with that crowd control, keep everybody healthy and keep things moving fast, doing a lot of damage, you know? And uh, so that's, that's her role in the comp. And you can see, quick work here. Let's go ahead and sell this and take her into dragons. Uh, just to kind of show what she does, but again, she's she's there for the waves in Dragons and Ice Golem, not there for the boss necessarily, although she will put out some damage. So we'll take her into Dragon 20 here. Let's put her in for, this is kind of a weird team to, to compliment her. I don't even have a, uh, uh, uh. I guess we'll put her in for, see, Royal Guard is my main damage dealer too. I guess I'll put her in for Kaimar. Don't feel great about it, but let's see how we do. So the reason Kaimar works well on this team is he has the, and I have Shamrock in here. I told you guys in the last guide video, but I love Shamrock. I love, uh, I just, I feel like he's a super solid champion now after the buff. And it's funny, like when I did the guide on Shamrock, I wasn't as high on him as I am now after I made the guide a couple weeks ago. I've been using him more and more and more and just finding that his kit is just nice and versatile on the Lucky Charms ability, which is his A2 yeah, it's A2. It's it's nice. It gives you whatever you need at the time because it's one of those abilities. You guys can see the guide if you're interested. But it's one of those abilities that it has a... Uh, if your champions are at above 50% HP, it gives them a speed boost and it gives them a crit rate and stuff like that. If they're below 50% HP, well, instead, it will give them a revive on death and a uh, continuous heal. 
So whatever you need at the time, even on auto attack, it's going to give you whatever you need just based on your team and how they're doing. And you guys can see this is going really well. I noticed a few stuns being applied by Elaine. She's doing a good job. She's doing the majority of our damage here, no doubt about it, even more than Royal Guard so far. And now we've made it to the uh, to the uh, the dragon, excuse me. <laughs> and uh, what what is, what is this thing? It's a dragon, Ash. It's a dragon. So I'm really happy with this guy. I feel like she's been doing incredibly well. She was impressive in the arena. She's doing great against the Dragon 20 here. You know, again, she's not putting out, she's not going to be putting out a ton of damage. And this is where we're going to lose a little bit of time here. But I think that our team will stay alive just fine. And, you know, what she do? 15k to the Dragon there again. You know, it's Royal Guard who's going to be doing most of the damage. But, you know, every staying alive. Granted, I do have two legendaries in this team. So, you know, I mean, but you can... You can do this without any legendaries. I've done it here, you know, on the channel multiple times. Uh, and you can do it, you can get by with a variety of different compositions still using Elaine. You can do it with all rares. You can do it without epics, you know. Especially, again, I just can't stress enough the, the stun sets. Even if it's not maxed out, you know. Farm stun sets and really value those sets more than the rest, you know. Or certainly as much as speed, personally. I would, I would value stun right up there. I think it's it's just incredible what it can do. And this is going to be a pretty fast run, you know. Uh, and it's, you know, she was the main. She kept the pace going on those waves. And there it goes. Uh, Royal Guard finishes the job. And, and you can see that she did 600k damage. So not too bad. But that wasn't against the, you see the high numbers there from all the other champions. But she did the bulk of the damage on the waves. Again, not against the dragon, right? And a lot of the damage done by Bad L. Uh, was the was all the poisons and royal guard kind of the same deal on his uh, big money ability against the dragon there at the end so guys i hope you've enjoyed this guide uh, i just want to wish you guys a, a happy weekend if you're watching this in real time and if not i hope you enjoy the channel if you like this content or you want to see a specific champion guide just go ahead and let me know in the comments below and uh, subscribe if you enjoyed the content guys i really appreciate it i'm really happy with the growth here on this channel it's because of you guys i really appreciate it i really appreciate the feedback especially early in my channel's life here. So thank you for watching, and as always, take care, guys.